So as a current medical student in the United States, I study quite a lot. And so you can imagine that my time really needs to be managed well in order to get all of the studying um, and preparation for exams that I need. And so one of the tools that I use is the Pomodoro technique. And so today I just wanted to talk to you about what that looks like, how to use it, as well as um, some pitfalls that you want to avoid when using the Pomodoro technique. My name is Timothy Dillinger and I'm a first year medical student here in the United States and today I wanted to talk about the Pomodoro technique. So this is a technique that you can use in your studying right now that doesn't really require uh, much setup at all and it will improve your productivity moving forward. And so this technique is just used to kind of manage your time well and so it kind of separates your time into sections where you're going to be studying and really focused as well as sections where you're taking a break to kind of have a mental recharge before you go in to your next study session. If you're studying for long periods of time, this is really important because our brain kind of just feels fatigued after studying or working or being focused for long periods of time. And you can definitely develop that skill over time to improve the length of time you're able to study and remain focused. But the Pomodoro technique is really crucial in order to kind of help you build your mental endurance and give your brain enough time to rejuvenate before you kind of jump back into studying. And so I think that this is one of the best tools that you can use right now in order to improve your ability to study or work for long periods of time. And the Pomodoro technique has actually been studied. So in 2020, during COVID, uh, they wanted to find a way of a technique to encourage students in order to do the lessons that they needed to do at home. And so they found that using Pomodoro actually improved their learning skills, specifically in English. And they found that the ones that use the breaks where you're being productive, you're making your tea, you're using the restroom, uh, rather than you know checking on your phone and playing and things like that. Uh, those that did those sorts of breaks uh, tended to do better. And so this is kind of like a research backed study that has shown that Pomodoro, especially for certain subtypes of people, especially if you're procrastinating and you're just not studying, uh, then this technique will do really well. So how you use the Pomodoro technique is not really that complicated. You're basically going to take your study session, let's say you're going to study for an hour, um, let's say for a biology exam coming up in a few weeks. And so you would basically separate your time into chunks of studying and chunks of break. Typically, the most recommended would be 25 minutes of studying followed by five minutes of break. And then you would repeat that four times and that would give you an entire Pomodoro session. And then after those four sessions, you would take a longer break, uh, typically 30 minutes. So what this practically looks like is you would study for 25 minutes, take a five minute break, 25 minutes again, five minute break, 25, five, 25, five, and then you would take a 30 minute break instead of that last five that I just mentioned. When you think about using your breaks well, this really shouldn't be just anything that you do during your break. And so not all breaks are made the same. And so if you think about, you have your five minute break, uh, sure you could get on YouTube, you could get on Facebook or Twitter and kind of just zone out, so to speak, for five minutes. But I've personally find that I spend a lot longer time on break if I'm actually getting on social media or checking my phone or, or doing things that kind of get you out of work mode. Instead, I really like to fill my breaks with productive things that aren't really mind taxing, but they enable me to remain productive, remain in that kind of energy state. You know, you, you, you know what I'm talking about when you're in a productive mood and so you're not really thinking about, you're not distracted by these other things things that you're not really in the in the mood to do. And so I really like to fill this time like breaks with doing dishes, doing chores around the house, taking a short walk if it's nice outside. Uh, so five minutes of just walking in the sunshine uh, can really help continue your productive mood. It gets you out of the house. You're not really thinking, uh, which is nice because it gives your mind a chance to relax as well as just get some natural exercise, which is always really nice. And so that's definitely a much better use of your break. You're still taking a break. You're still letting your mind relax, but instead you're filling this time with productive things that aren't really taxing on your brain. Versus if you get on Facebook or social media, check YouTube, you know, scroll through Reddit or any of the news sources, that'll really kind of tax your mind. It'll be stimulating and it'll also direct your attention kind of so your, your body and your mind will start thinking that you're in relaxation mode rather than productive mode. And so I definitely recommend that when you're on your breaks, um, especially for the shorter breaks instead of the longer break that you fill that with more productive times and you can think about your own use case 
of perhaps you have a couple easy chores, you know, take out the trash, uh, which would combine a lot of those. Plus at the end of all of your studying, you have less chores to do, which is really nice. There's many tools online that you can use to kind of separate your time into this way. Uh, there's apps on your phone, which I'll share in the video above. Um, there are things that you can use just like paper um, that you can use to keep track of each session, or you can just use an old fashioned uh, timer with set it to 25 minutes. And then after 25 minutes, you kind of know to take your next break for five minutes. The application that I personally use, um, because I am a Mac lover, I love anything Apple. Um, if Apple made a car, I would drive it. And I hope that they will in the coming future. <laughs> but I am going to use Flow, which is the app that I use on my computer. And so this will be an example of how I would actually use that application, where you basically go in, you set the time to 25 minutes, you set the break duration to five minutes and you kind of use it. It sits in the top of your bar. Um, so you kind of don't notice it. It's not in the way, but it'll kind of pop up um, once you get to your break session and that'll kind of prompt you to either take a break or which I'll talk about later, uh, skipping breaks if you're in like a state of flow or like just a state of deep focus. While the Pomodoro technique is definitely really useful for a lot of the reasons that I've talked about, there's also a few pitfalls that you wanna definitely avoid as you use the Pomodoro technique because they'll kind of reduce your productivity while you're using Pomodoro. And so the first one is definitely getting into a flow state and then the break interrupting that. So you, you know what I'm talking about. When you're doing work, you're working on a project, studying for an assignment, and you're just kind of in the flow and you kind of look at the time and you're like, oh my gosh, it's been like three hours and I'm really not thinking about it being a taxing three hours. Or, you know, it's seven o'clock, you haven't eaten dinner because you've been reading about something that's actually pretty interesting. And so this is kind of what they call a state of flow. And so you don't want to interrupt that. And so that's one of the common critiques of Pomodoro is that as you're going through, you're in the state of flow, you're really focused, and then bam, you have a break, and you're like, oh, well, I, I should go take the break, I guess. And then you get back from your break, and you're just not the same. It takes a bit more time to get back into the groove of things. And so if you're in the state of flow, if you're really focused, if you're enjoying what you're reading about, you're enjoying studying, um, then you can just continue. Just skip the break like I showed you in flow, and just continue on studying, and then you can take a longer break later. And so this is something that I do often, that often there's times when I'm doing Anki or I'm studying or I'm working on a presentation for the next day and I'm just enjoying what I'm learning about or I'm kind of in the state of flow. I'm not really tempted to go and do other things. I'm really enjoying it. And then I go and just skip the breaks and then I'll add on those breaks at the end of the study session so I can get done studying early. Let's say I want to do eight hours of studying in a day. So then after those eight hours of studying, if I skipped a few breaks, there'll be longer time at the end of the day, which is really nice to let me relax, spend time with my wife and do other, other things that um, just are more fun to do, honestly. So pitfall number two is that people typically take the breaks and then they take longer breaks than they're supposed to. And so what this looks like is you do 25 minutes, you do your five minute break, um, but really you got on Twitter or you got on Reddit and all of a sudden it's 10 minutes later. And you, so then you kind of jump back in and you kind of continue to do that repeatedly. And then all of a sudden you've only done four sessions of 25 minutes and you've taken two hours of breaks. And so that's one of the common critiques and really how to avoid this is one, you can set a timer for your breaks. And so when the timer is done, you start studying again. And Flow does this really well. Most of the other Pomodoro apps, honestly, will do this really well. Well, they'll have a timer specifically for the break. And so just adhere to that. Um, instead of ignoring it and finishing what you're doing on your break, instead just go back to actually studying. And all this goes back to what I was saying about taking productive breaks, that really breaks that are five minutes long, that are productive, that you have assigned tasks to do during it, let's say doing the trash or dishes or whatever it is, um, those things are less likely to bleed into taking more time. And so if you're on Instagram or Twitter or Reddit, you're really gonna be pretty tempted to continue to do more because that's like their purpose, right? That's how social media works is it, can, it wants to increase our usage of it, which if we're being leisure, if we have time when we're dedicating to, oh, like, you know, it's at the end of the day, like there's not a problem with spending time on Instagram if that's definitely your like hobby or your way of unwinding. But when you're during those kind of smaller, shorter breaks, you really want those to be focused because uh, one, that'll help you just feel more productive, which I already talked about. But two, that'll help you actually keep five minutes instead of it dragging into 10, 15, 30 minutes. Lastly, I just wanted to talk about how I personally use Pomodoro. I've already talked about it a little bit, but this is kind of my process 
process they're going through. And so I'm a current medical student. I do a lot of studying being flashcards like Anki and studying. And then also I do uh, two presentations each week as part of my curriculum. And so my time is kind of spent either doing flashcards or doing reading through various primary literature and then preparing presentations for my class. And so what this looks like for me is that I use Pomodoro One to just track my time because I personally like knowing how much time I've spent on different content. Um, that helps me feel prepared when I go into an exam, knowing that I've done a pretty good job at being focused and getting the time spent studying that I need to in order to prepare well. It also lets me track and see, oh, like this week you only studied for, you know, let's say 30 hours a week when normally you do 45 to 50. And so this may be a lighter week that really you need to do work harder, so to speak. Um, if that, you know, and there's some weeks when 30 is fine, but definitely I use this ability to track. And so Flow does a really good job, uh, hashtag not sponsored. Uh, Flow does a really good job at tracking those things for you. And then I also like to use Pomodoro just to kind of stay focused and again, jump into things when I'm not really in the mood to be focused. You know, there's times when I feel very energized by what I'm learning. Uh, medical school is fantastic in the sense that I'm learning things I've been preparing to learn for many years. Um, but there's other topics that I'm just less interested in. And so using Pomodoro in order to kind of get over the step of, okay, like I'm studying, uh, just starting the first session, getting in for 25 minutes. I typically find that at the end of that 25 minutes, I don't really wanna take a break. I'm usually at that point kind of engaged in a sense of flow. And so I'll just continue, I'll skip a lot of breaks. And that's personally what I do. So what it usually looks like is doing about two hour sessions and then taking a kind of a longer break in between, uh, whether that's making lunch, going for a run, spending time with my wife, uh, things like that, which give me a little bit more relaxation for a longer period of time. Uh, but it kind of depends on how you work and whether you want more frequent breaks or whether uh, longer breaks do well for you. And so you can do a trial and error. It doesn't have to be this 25 minute, five minute, and then a long break after four sessions. You can do longer periods of time. Really the Pomodoro technique is designed to get you started on studying, uh, recognizing that I may not want to study for 25 hours, but I'm going to. Uh, that is what I've decided to do. And this time is focused on 25 minutes of just studying. And so uh, moving forward, that's really how I use it is a little bit looser than that 25 minutes and then five minutes with a long break after four sessions. But really it's a way to track and just tell myself, okay, you're in study mode. Don't do other things. Don't check Facebook. Don't check YouTube. Don't uh, do any of these other things uh, and focus completely on studying. So if you want a practical next step for you to see, maybe you have never used Pomodoro before, uh, then you can definitely check out this video right up here. And that will be a link, which I'll briefly talk about Pomodoro, but you can skip that timestamps in the description and you can do a Pomodoro session with me. Uh, it'll be a recording of me kind of studying along uh, with some ambient music in the background. And that'll let you kind of try out whether you like this 25 minutes, five minutes, and then you can replay the video in order to get multiple sessions. Um, another thing that you can do is subscribe. I'll be talking about a lot of other study tips as well as other things in healthcare that are interesting, like things like AI and um, healthcare, just like the economics of it as well. And so if any of those things interest you, uh, you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel and that content will be coming over the next few weeks. I uh, thank you so much. Have a good day.